a lot better uh, than what I thought. And uh, they've certainly improved even more since I've been here. And, uh, you know, we look very, very resolute, physically very strong. You know, we've got that air of uh, confidence about us as well. And that comes, obviously, with not losing games. And, um, you know, even if we do go a goal down or whatever, you know, the... Uh, you know, we, we still feel we can get ourselves back in the game. You know, we played in the 90 minutes, and everyone's totally committed to each other. You know, even the boys coming off the bench are making big contributions. And uh, you know, as a squad, it's as good as any I've been involved in. Thompson, and his cross is just beyond John Hartson. That's given away by Zitelli to Lennon. Hartson again, Neil Lennon. That's a brilliant goal for your first of the season. They don't come along too often, the Lennon goals, but they tend to be something special. And this was perfectly placed into the top corner, and Tony Keg didn't have an earthly. Come here and play like that in a quarter final of a European competition, and to qualify for the semi final is just it's hard to take in at the minute, you know. It hasn't sunk in yet, I don't think. Well, I think it's put us, you know, firmly on the map now, not just in Britain, but in Europe and that, as, you know, genuine contenders now to go on and sort of contest European competitions, so the, the real, you know, the final stages. Uh, but the overall thing, Tony, was where we played, like, to a man, like, you know, there was nobody let us down, everyone. Sort of made massive contributions, and you know we lost Sotti and Didier, and the boys who have come in were fantastic tonight. That's Zorowski. Maloney again, a very neat turn. Lennon. Well, that's what they really would like to see. He scored. Neil Lennon, the first time since December 2001 against Hibs at Celtic Park. We don't see that very often. That man is completely surprised. The teammates are surprised, shocked, and they're delighted. The seventh one, and a good afternoon's work. Celtic supporters celebrating the style. I know it's a good ground for me. Um, Sean rolled it out to me, and no one really came to close me down. I just thought, oh, I'll just have a pop here. Couldn't believe it when it went in. I oh, couldn't believe it. Must have bounced four times before uh, it did go in. But it was oh, just a magic moment, like, you know. And uh, you can see what, what the, the players thought of it, because even Arthur came running the full length of the pitch to celebrate. So, I mean, I've been getting a lot of stick. Like, I was a four year wait, so hopefully we won't have to wait. He played in this oh, no, championship success. And Neil Lennon is going to get to grips with yet another championship medal. Yep, that's the thing about Celtic this season. What's been your highlight? Um, poor Vista away, I think, when we uh, got to Seville. Um, there's been so many good memories, you know, just playing with great players and uh, playing with great managers and just playing for this great club. I can't believe I'm, you know, I'm not going to pull the jersey on again at the end of the year, but uh, it's been a brilliant seven years. I've loved it. And uh, the wonderful Celtic, Celtic fans, the Celtic support, what do they, what do they mean to you? Uh, they've been like a 12th man, especially on the European nights. And sometimes after, you know, we've had a difficult game or a, a defeat, they've, they've sort of picked us up again, like, you know, as we've gone on over the years. And I remember getting beaten in Benfica and coming through the airport and they were still cheering us on and giving the whole squad such a lift. Neil Lennon will be the 10th Celtic captain, 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 captain since the war to lift the Scottish Cup. Jackie McNamara lifted the last two. Bobby Evans, Jock Steen, Billy McNeil seven times. Kenny Dalglish, Danny McGrain, Roy Aitken, Paul McStay and Paul Lambert. The first Irishman since the war to lift a famous old trophy for Celtic. The man who's won more honours 
hands on the hoops and even the great Kenny Dalgleish makes it on her number 11, this time as captain. A boyhood dream for Neil Lennon. Celtic celebrate the double. Well, it was a huge responsibility. Obviously delighted. It sort of dawned on me the, the enormity of the job. Mm. Obviously I'd, I'd already had Johan with me and it was just a question of trying to get the right backroom staff in as well. And the players, you know, we needed to, you know, change the squad because the previous season was nowhere near good enough and um, that's that was uh, first and foremost in my mind was to get the, the playing staff in the back room. And you can be sure that the Celtic fans inside Ibrox today won't be leaving for a while. Scott Brown and Gary Hooper in amongst those fans. Neil Lennon unable to call on so many players today but the ones who pulled on the shirt stood up and were counted. Big time. The New Year honours in Glasgow go to Celtic. The New Year derby at Ibrox finishes Rangers nil, Celtic 2. This isn't the end, this is just the beginning. It's behind in October. I felt we could get our way back into it. I said to the players, look, if you can just chip away three, three points a month, you know, you'll catch them by, by your own. Don't forget you've got to play them three times. Well, I didn't envisage we would close the gap so quickly, but, you know, the psychology of, of the environment turned very, very quickly and all the momentum started to come with us, but we still had to go out and win the games, and we did that very well. I've always maintained that we want to win it by more than 10 points, and if you give Rangers a 10 points back, it's still pretty convincing. We won a league. We're 15 points behind, and if you look at if you take the 10 points deduction away, we're still, was it 10 points? To come back to 15 points behind, and we got in front of them without them getting the, the 10 points taken off them anyway, so there's no, there's no thinking about that. We managed to make one of the biggest comebacks I think in history. Being 15 points down to being 20 points in front, I don't think you'll ever see that again. Like all sports, if you win something and you've cheated, then it is tainted. We haven't done anything wrong as a club. The players have done nothing wrong on the pitch. They've played the best football, they've scored the most goals, they've conceded less, they've got the best disciplinary record, and they've played the best football. So they were the winners, and it's only people who are sore losers who are trying to come up with these um, small little gripes or little digs that mean nothing to us really. That's been a bit of a roller coaster, but um, ultimately hugely rewarding. I'm immensely satisfied with the, the season and um, it all goes well for next year. The hard work starts now. Being a Celtic manager or indeed player so castigated and abused in public life. There are those who often fall back on an absurd line of thought that the Irishman brings it upon himself which speaks more for those particular individuals rather than the manager of Celtic Football Club. For that is what Neil Lennon is. That is the job that his employers pay him to do and it is what he ultimately should be judged upon. It makes me feel very proud, but proud, proud of them, you know, not proud of myself. You know, they are the players now, I've had my day. I am their manager, yes, and it's my job to get the best out of them, but what pleases me more is that they, they've repaid the faith that we've shown in them and, and the belief that we've shown in them, now they believe in themselves. With a league title and a Scottish Cup on his CV after two years in charge, as well as nurturing a young, talented squad of players with an average age of 24, he is already a conspicuous success, and he is not, nor ever has been, a quitter. He just doesn't do walking away. One of the greatest nights in the club's recent history. Um, very poignant on the 125th anniversary. One to play Barcelona in such a prestigious game, and then to, to win the game under huge difficulties um, with the squad decimated with injuries and illness. The players are heroes, the heroes to me. Um, I can't speak highly enough of their performances tonight. And uh, one of them in the history books of the club was um, the team that beat probably the best team in the world. Thank you. I can just interrupt you for one second, you know. I'm all for letting the people sing, and uh, I hope you sing really loud and proud tonight. It's another memorable day in the, the history of 
You know what I believe is the greatest club in the world. We, uh, for me, uh, you may be happy, but I'm the happiest man in, in the country tonight. And uh, thank you very much.